Hello, I'm Andrew. And I'm Jackie. And we're going to show you what we uh, recently did. We went to the Boundary Waters up by the uh, coast of uh, Canada, up in Minnesota. And we had a great trip. We brought our North Star Northwind 18 canoe that's new to us. And an old Minnesota 2, um, which was paddled by my son Kevin and my friend Mike. Uh, Grayson, who is our grandson, he's six years old, came along and uh, he actually caught a lot of the fish that we ate. Uh, he caught the biggest bass of the trip, uh, the first fish that, that was caught uh, in the trip. We'll show you a little bit about that. Um, we went about 20 and a half miles in and went to a waterfall and camped on an island and just had a ball. So We'll go over, over everything as, uh, as you go through the video, so stick with us. Uh, there's a lot to cover, and hopefully uh, we can kind of give you a, a good, good idea of what we experienced up there, which was just a wonderful trip. I, I look forward to sharing it with you. If you remember last year, we actually took um, kind of a loop on the trip that we did. But this year, because we had Grayson, we did take an out and back trip we did less portaging or portaging depending on how you like to say it than what we did last year um, keeping him in mind and his size and what he had to carry um, kind of made a deciding factor in not doing the longer loop the four of us adults could have accomplished that but we were worried because this is his first trip and he was carrying his own backpack with his sleeping bag and his cooking utensils and things that he might not be as happy to walk so yeah, far. And, and part of part of the experience of the Boundary Waters is carrying your own gear. And uh, another uh, aspect of it is you have to rough it a little bit. And, and the more you rough it, the more you uh, you love it. I, I really think you have to go through the full experience of, you know, paddling, portaging, carrying your gear, you know, going through uh, and you know, with without any of that, you, you're really missing out on on what this area is all about, and you know, getting into the back country. So we we wanted uh, Grayson to fully experience that, and and still have a good time. And, well, and that's part of it. You know, I guess you have to feel the pain in order to uh, have a good time it, yeah. and, and to appreciate the beautiful uh, stuff out there. And that is one thing you kept saying over and over and over out there was... This is this, so beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> this is beautiful. I mean, how yeah. many six-year-olds do you hear say that very often? And every time we would turn a corner or like at the waterfalls or, you know, in the morning when we're starting out paddling, that would be, oh, this is so beautiful, Nani. This is so beautiful. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. it made our hearts melt just hearing him. <laughs> you know, be able to to express that to us. Yeah, it was very cool. And you know, if you ever uh, get out into an area like that, and to be able to see it through a child's eyes is is that that it's like reliving it. It's awesome. Okay, let's uh, get into the map first. I'm gonna kind of go over the map, and and we'll kind of bounce in and show show you a few things uh, uh, that we were doing, and uh, hopefully we don't bore you to death, but. Uh, Stick with it. There's a lot of good stuff. <laughs> so the trip started out on Moose Lake at the Moose Lake uh, parking lot where we put in and paddled <clears throat> for several miles up to Newfound Lake, which uh, you have to go look through a little pass to get there. And then you move on to Sucker Lake. And then to the first portage, which is about uh, 10 yard, uh, 10 rods rather. And then into uh, Birch Lake that uh, you know kind of borders the Canadian border. And this is where Grayson caught his first bass, which was up in Birch Lake. And it was just before that first portage right there. You're doing good, Grayson. Yep, yep, just keep fighting them. Yep, yep. You're, doing, you're doing good. Keep good fighting job. them. There we go. Good there job. we go. Oh my goodness. That's you a did good a one. Great job. Look at that. All right, bring him over to me. And bring him over go. to me. Put him in the net. Whoop, he got under. Okay, he's going to come back. Let's try again. Here we go. go Here we go. Bring him over towards the way. All right, bring him over and he's in the net. Okay. Yay! 
Good job. Good job. <laughs> Yay. Yep, he's right here. All right, let's get this guy over to the shore so we can go uh, clean him up and eat him for lunch. <laughs> what do you think, Grayson? Go. <laughs> And then we continued through the rest of those four portages that are pretty close together, dumping us into Knife Lake and past Robbins Island and past Thunder Point. And that's uh, where we stopped to camp for two nights. So during those two nights and uh, you know, the days that surrounded it, we did a lot of fishing and just had a ball. Just uh, hanging out at the island, hitting the coves, and uh, cooking the fish that we caught. Here we have hash browns, fresh fish. There's our beautiful cook. And the cove that we caught a lot of the fish in. That's uh, adjacent to Thunder Point. There's Kevin with his tent. And our final sunset. During the time we camped for two nights on the island, so that uh, day that was in between, we took a little day trip up through Lower Knife Lake, back to a waterfall, and that's the furthest point that we traveled from the put-in at Moose Lake. It's about uh, 20 and a half miles, roughly. The purpose of going to the waterfall was to try to catch some fish, you know, theoretically down where the falls uh, come into the lake. Uh, we did catch some fish, uh, particularly Grayson. Let Nani help you with it. That's good. He was catching them one after the other. It was, it was pretty cool on the way there and on the way back. Was having a ball. Yeah. It was really nice to introduce him to the boundary waters. I really enjoyed having him along. Then, of course, we went back to camp, spent the night, and then on the way out, had another uh, evening. Uh, just past the four portages as we came in, uh, we grabbed the campsite. We set up camp pretty early just because it was uh, looking like it may start to rain, and it did. You know, it was a nice steady rain, and of course Grayson did some more fishing, we did more fishing. Went out into a cove there and uh, you know, caught some dinner. And Jackie and I Went out for a little bit of a canoe, uh, you know, ride. Actually, it was the day before we saw the moose, but I'm going to show you a picture of the moose now. We we're coming around uh, the corner. You, kind of, you can kind of see his butt and his horns in the woods there, but uh, he was one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. The last day we started early and uh, paddled back out to Moose Lake. And had a, uh, a very nice close to the trip. Uh, anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. I just wanted to kind of show you what we did in the Boundary Waters. It was a, a beautiful trip. Everybody had great a, a great time. And uh, Grayson caught a lot of fish. Everybody caught a lot of fish. And it was just a beautiful time.